All right. Let's get some underpainting done. So we have here this sketch. This young boy looking a Elizabethan age type thing. Uh, he's kind of got medium brown hair with his little stocking cap thing going on back here. So we'll uh, so let's get this underpainted and then we can kind of go from there. So if you, you might have seen the video, maybe not, depends what order they come up in on YouTube, where um, we painted a young girl, um, kind of from the same era. So maybe if you saw that, you'll see the same kind of a thing today. All right, so we're going to start off, this is a, a standard canvas, back staple canvas. It's got two coats of gesso. And then it's got um, a pencil sketch. Then over the top of that, we have sprayed a fix it, a Krylon's fix it, which will hold the sketch in place, hopefully, while we put the rest of the, while we put this uh, burn umber treatment on it. Now, what we're going to do is put a burnt umber treatment on it. We're going to use a little bit of medium and some burnt umber. We're going to start off, we're going to stain the whole canvas. I'm going to put this on however you want. I'm just doing it with a fan brush. You can use a filbert or a one inch brush. Uh, whatever. Whatever suits you. I don't think I'd do it with a script liner. Maybe. Well, you know, you got a lot of time though. I guess you could do it with that. I'm just going to kind of steal some paint from up here in the corner. Pull it down. Don't need a lot of, don't need a lot of color on for this. So now we're going to underpaint this, and then we will go through, we'll let that dry after we underpaint it. And then once it's underpainted uh, and it dries, we'll apply the first layer of colored layers and then the final couple of layers. In that order. Although sometimes I get a little rambunctious and I do the final cover, colored layers at the same time. But that's the first one. This doesn't really matter too much. I'm just making sure I got it kind of in every direction. All the paint in kind of every direction. I'm going to do all the threads. Okay, let's clean this brush. Let's clean this brush. Wipe it out on a paper towel and put it away. And now we'll start the second phase of an underpainting. We'll start here is wiping away, starting to wipe away the paint. So we want to lay lights and the darks out in the underpainting so that when we glaze the color layers on if that part all that decision making has been done start working on this young man see how this plays out now I think out here before I get going in too much I don't need to wipe too much of this away because it's going to be dark really so I'm going to wipe some of the way just to kind of highlight his face a little bit, a little bit better now I'm going to pick this up just to some q-tips so we got a lot of so these are just regular standard run-of-the-mill q-tips um, I did promise myself yesterday that I was going to start making sure they were wound really tight so let's do that all right so let's start with uh, oh, 
gorgeous start on his hat. His hat's going to be red and white. So let's get... Um, all of this part is a lighter color up till we get up to that line right there. Get the maximum use out of my Q-tips here. <laughs> all right, it seems to be about all you get out of that. Now, if you decide for some reason that you've wiped too much away, you can always, you know, add a little bit back, a little bit of this mixture back again. All right, now this part right here, we're going to come down. Because there's a bend in his hat right there. I don't want to wipe all that away because some of it is, you know, red. So, it's a white stripe here. So I'm just turning the Q-tip around. There's a a little bit of a, a white stripe here. I don't know if I'll hold these colors true when I paint them because I may decide when I put the color layer on, I may decide that I want to change the colors up a little bit. But a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. Yep, I got that piece. Well, I got that piece. There's another piece right here. Okay, over here, there's a teeny little bit of light right there. I've actually penciled some of those in. That's good of me. I'm glad I did that because now I know where they go. All right, and then on down here, there's actually a part that's not in this in the reference photo that I decided not to add. So let's just put Now we're just going to continue to wipe away here for right now. Then we'll come back and start putting the lines in. So let's, we got quite a bit of bright here on his face. Young man's got a lot of forehead, <laughs> just like me. Right. Then we're gonna kinda, let's just kinda wipe this off first and we'll come back. All right. Let's
We're gonna end kind of wiping this a little more than I need to for some consistency, but the uh, we'll come back and put some of the shadow back in. Approximating the values for right now that we want to put. And if you're wondering why I'm moving around, I'm just kind of, you know, getting the. using the q tip as efficiently as I can. So I fill it up a little bit. Remember, I want a little bit of shadow. We've already got some in the. on the q tip, and I just kind of move that over there. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I've already got paint on the Q-tip and I want to apply some shadow, then I just apply it over here. And come all the way up against that eye for now. Okay, let's, um, let's go ahead and So this is beginning the next series of underpaintings. I did a whole bunch of, of underpaintings a while back and then um, I painted all of those and now I've got one left that's in progress with the Volkswagens, but I'll get that I'll get might get that done today even. I'll probably get two of these underpaintings done and then if I still if I still got some go power, I'll probably finish those Volkswagens. Get that series finished. It was a series of about seven or eight paintings. I was on an underpainting streak, so I just kind of. I don't know if you could really call them a series because the paintings were not. Unlike my Summer Girl series, they were not attached to each other. They were just. They didn't bear a common theme. They just happened to all be done at the same time. All right, now. This part of his neck is going to be in shadow, so we're going to kind of Let's start applying some of the darks, and that'll kind of maybe get us moving. Now, over here on the palette, I've got, um, I still got the, the medium and the burnt umber. So I'm just taking a, a, a baby wipe and wiping away that 
extra medium because I don't want to get that mixed up with the paint I'm about to use. So we'll set this medium off. I think the plate feels extra thick because I used it yesterday too. Okay. Now. Yeah. Okay, I still missed a spot. That's why you do it this way. Okay, now out here we've got a little bit of his ear. And his hair comes around that side too, so that's good. His hair comes around that side good. That's what I was mumbling to myself. Okay. Got those, got those, got that. Alright, so now. Smoothing this out. And now we'll, we'll kind of switch back and forth between putting paint on, taking paint off. All right, so let's get started. So I'm going to use an angle brush. I kind of like this angle brush. This is a Princeton. I thought about this at Michael's, but I went there to buy some today. They didn't have any in sight. As a matter of fact, they didn't have any paint brushes that I really thought I wanted to buy. So that's unusual. But there you go. It is what it is. I'm going to just apply a little bit of. We'll be putting small, small pieces of paint on here. decide what I want to use as a blending brush. I think I'll just use this fan. brush to a sharp, really sharp edge. Can you see that? With this burnt umber. We're just using the trailing edge to pull this paint. And I may need to put a little bit more paint out because this is left over from yesterday. And I don't know what your experience is with burnt umber, but it dries pretty darn fast compared to like titanium white. Okay. Now, out here I got a little more paint than I want, so I'm just going to take this and wipe this back. There we go. If you use a brush like this, or you use a flat, and you do this, you can do the same thing with this flat, just pulling these long, drawn lines out like this. 
if you do, as you begin to run out of paint, stop and go back and fill your paintbrush back up and then come back. There's a tendency that if you're like, oh no, I'm almost there, and you push down on the brush a little harder um, in order to try to make it, you know, stretch out, and, and the end result is you're just going to get um, splotchy. It's going to be splotchy. There's a big shadow right here. There's also a dark shadow, like, it's kind of like this. Right above his ear. So you might can see I'm painting just with the tip of the brush. Now I'm off the line right there. I got off the line into his hair. So we'll just take that off and we'll come back and fix it here in a second. I'll put his hair in last or next to last or close to last or something. All right. All right. We got a little. Let's put his ear in. some ear. There we go. And then this part right here has got some highlights, so we'll put a little bit of darker right there. This, this side of his face is kind of shadowed, and we're going to leave it that way, I think. See if I can add a little extra shadow right up here on the edge of his face. here and take some paint off of his lips okay now the shadow is going to fall on this side a little bit so we'll leave that like it is for now anyways and we will, let's add some darkness here. Let's add his ear in. Don't be afraid to go back and get more paint.
blend. Let's do some blending now. Let's just start down here. We're kind of splitting these lines with the brush. Over here, we're just going to kind of pull this paint around. Where I scrubbed it off just to kind of make that go away. There we go. All right, let's go back. Let's do a little bit more with the with this Q-tip. You know, he does have some shadow around his eyes, but right here, in this edge, We don't want to make him look like he's crazy. So, all right. Now, we're going to add some dark back in. So let's, let's go ahead and open up the whites of the eyes. Need some more Q-tips for that. Oh, wait, I got some over here. So I'll tell you what, let's just do it this way. Let's. This is a really small footprint that I'm doing here with this 8x10. So I can't quite do it like I would on a 16x20, but we can get the same result. Let's just get it. Get it to where we need it to be. And then we'll be good. do that I'm gonna take I guess I'll go back to the q-tip I want the white of the eye to be a little brighter and I may not be able to squeeze that in but we'll see that looks okay we're gonna move a little bit different off of the reference photo because I don't quite have the face right where I want it just yet. I'm picking, I still got some extra shadows in here that I don't want. I can't seem to squish them out with a toothpick, so. There we go, that looks a little better. What I mean by that was I was, um, was leaving little pieces of trail behind. It wasn't quite as even as I want it to be when I color it. So, go 
because once you've got once you have the shadows and stuff laid out and you start glazing that's the wrong time to, to realize you've got the wrong shadow right so okay now let's see now now that I did that I saw another piece I missed so right here on his shirt it's another piece of white it's really white so we'll have to deal with that in a minute this is all in skin A little darker up around his neck. All right, there we go. All right. I guess I say all right enough. All right. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, my stomach's growling. Let's, let's start working on these eyes now. He's got brown eyes. We'll move into that in a second, but... We've already put his eyebrows in, so let's put in like this little eyelid crinkle. And then we have Below the eye, we have the waterline. Hmm. My brush just don't want to put that line down. All right, so let's get, let's try it with the smaller brush. I don't know about that. I think the paint's just maybe a little too dry. We'll give it a spin here, see how it goes. I don't want to add any medium to this if I can help it because, you know. Okay, I'm not happy with that. You know, it's one thing you get with this channel that you, you don't see on a lot of other channels. You kind of see everybody's kind of oh everything just went perfect they just did it so perfect well yeah they've rehearsed it three or four times so not us we just kind of get in here and do it Let's see how it comes out because so i think it's in the mistakes that you get the most learning Tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna try this burnt over one more time with this liner brush. I mean, with this uh, brush. Let's start off by putting this iris in. Exactly as I want it, but it's okay. It's okay for a start. It's kind of pushing some paint around there. We have some reflected light in this iris. So, you know, it doesn't have to be super dark.
Alright, let's put that. seems like too much paint. If you get too much paint, it's going to glob on you when you go to put the line in, so. Alright, got a couple things that are wrong with this part. First of all, we brought this line over too far. And then we kind of moved the line up into the eye, and that was wrong. So let's just kind of push that out of the way. Ugh. All right. We can go back and add some, some more to this in a second, but let's just... Right back to the tiny brush. Now, I will tell you, I, I don't have the world's most steady hand, but. If I can draw this, you guys can do it too. Okay. I'm going to thin this line with this Q tip. Then I'll blend it in a minute. But I don't want him to look like he's got a black eye. But I do want to keep this shadow in there. Now I've done an awful lot of rubbing there, so I've kind of done away a little bit with uh, the pencil line. So it's going to be a little trickier from here on out for that part. There we go. That's better. That's better. Okay. Let's kind of get some nose parts in here. So we have like a I'm gonna use that. Show me where the rest of this goes. Blending it out a little bit. It's going to have a bit of shadow like this. Pay particular attention to the reference photo now. Okay. 
you this side of his nose looks a little bit I think this part needs to like so I'm making a little bit of a departure here but it's okay So his nose to be a little bigger. His mouth a little bit and we got some teeth in here so we got to work on those teeth we didn't have any teeth on the girl but we do on this guy wow this paint's starting to set up all right shadow under there is okay because we're going to need it. And a little bit of side shadow right there. Okay. Ah! Well, it didn't actually drop anything, but I don't know why, because I give it every chance to go to the floor. some shadow that 
Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna clean this brush. I'm gonna wipe it out really good. Now, I'm gonna put a little bit of medium on the palette somewhere that's not gonna get right in the midst of my pile. Just a bit, dab it out. And let's put, uh, let's lift a little bit of paint out of the pupil. stuff. <laughs> Where'd it go? Alright. Now, we want this to match, so I'm going to put those in at like 10 and 2. a little bit. on the action over here, but it's okay because I'm really just going to kind of brush all this down. Now over here, I'm going to add this extra line. And we're going to change the direction of the paint just a little bit because this is a sleeve. And it's actually, the sleeve is going to be a different color. So, I want to kind of brush this up this way. get too free right there because this is this part's gonna be really highlighted so this part down here goes okay. Bear the brush down a little bit. So now we're just kind of trying to get the brush in the general direction of the shirt. blend all this in just a second. This outside part we're going to wipe back a little bit because it's a, it's a bit lighter. This color is going to be like a lavender color, so we'll just kind of... I want it a little darker than his face, of course, but... And then we'll put some 
wrinkles in here in a second. Some of those we've kind of inherently put in just while I was painting. So that's okay. I'm at this part right here. All right, and let's do a little bit of lifting of paint now. So, a little bit more medium. Dab it off. I'm just going to come right over here. And lift a little bit of this off. Because this part right here is going to be bright white. And this part right here will also be bright white. The little piece of his clothing. And then right out here is kind of going to be bright white. So I'll kind of put that on like that. So I'm wiping this back, but then I'm kind of switching the end of the thing to kind of make sure I lift the medium off and blend this out really well. And then let's clean the brush. Let's also do a little bit of a lift right here on this part of his head. And maybe on this part. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think. I don't know. I'll find out when I wipe it off, I guess. I just kind of want it to fade off a little thing, so that looks pretty good. Let's clean this again. Let's put a little bit of, lift a little bit more of this right here. Let 
I want some shadow under there, but not too, I don't want it to be too bad, too much. All right. I think from there I'm going to stop piddling with it. Or maybe not. That's enough. All right, so there we go. Let this dry and set up, and then we'll start putting the colors on it and see how she looks. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.